People predict that in the future, machine intelligence will be embedded in everyday things all around us and they will respond to us and react to us and integrate with each other. That can't happen unless the amount of energy consumed is small enough to fit within the energy envelope that's available. So we are re-examining the fundamental computational elements of a computer to try to fundamentally understand what should be the building blocks of new computers in the world that's driven by artificial intelligence. At the moment, if you use Siri, for example, then Siri is running on a cloud server somewhere else that's doing a lot of analysis and actually using up a lot of energy consumption in order to do that. And what the kind of work I'm working on would enable is for that to be done very locally so that you don't need this high power consuming and expensive computing machinery in order to be able to do machine learning. I think we're very far away from theoretical limits of what's possible. You can see that by the amount of energy that a human brain consumes compared to a supercomputer. So you need a supercomputer to be able to get anywhere near a mouse brain, uh, and yet uh, a human brain is only you know, tens of watts. So the question is, why are we so far away from theoretical fundamental limits? So deep neural networks are the modern form of machine learning algorithms that, that people talk about most of the time these days. And in those deep neural networks, there are really two things that consume a lot of energy. Firstly, they contain a lot of computational units. And secondly, they compute with highly precise numbers. So they might compute with you know, 32 or even 64 bits of precision which is really complete madness when it comes to what's required in order to achieve um, the best performance. So at the moment, people are experimenting a lot with scaling down the precision with which we compute, but there are fundamental limits on how much you can scale down the precision with which you compute without considering other parts of the system. So you really need to take a holistic view of the topology of the interconnectivity of these systems together with how precisely you compute. And that's some of my work is looking at, at those questions. I think people come into academic research because they're curious. And then they can also see that they can make a, a huge impact on, uh, on the way people live their lives in the future. As a research group, it's our fundamental mission to push forward boundaries of human knowledge and to have an impact on society.